Hello, precious ones. Welcome to Kiss Star with Jesus, brought to you by COP USA. My name is Nina Ajay, and I will be with you today. We are going to learn from the Bible. We are going to sing some songs, and we are going to share ideas from the Bible. So, precious ones at home, stay put, invite a friend, invite mom and dad to sit in the couch with you, and let's have some fun. We are in the month of November, and in that, mo in that month, we all know a special day that we celebrate Thanksgiving, right? But we that are in the Lord, um, the month of November, we celebrate Thanksgiving too as Christians. But is it only that month that we need to celebrate Thanksgiving? No. We that are in the Lord that love Jesus Christ, anytime the Lord does something for us, we need to show appreciation. And this has always been my slogan having an attitude of gratitude, mm -hmm. saying thank you when someone do some, uh, does something for you. So pretty much that's what we'll be talking about this afternoon. I have handsome children and beautiful girls that have zoomed in here and are here with me. You are home to you are beautiful and you are handsome. God fearfully and wonderfully made you and we are so proud of you. You are unique in your own special way and we love you so much. So we'll give the precious ones here that have Zoom in the opportunity to tell us their names and which district they're coming from. So we'll start with the first person. Hello, my name is Esther Morgan and I'm from Patterson District. Hi, my name is Declan Afroy from Cleveland District. Hello, my name is Ensheria and I'm from Oakland District. Hello, my name is Benedict DeBoer from Cincinnati District. Hi, my name is Darren Afroy from Cleveland District. My name is Joel Morgan, and I'm from Patterson District. Hello, my name is James Osei Ampofo from PIWC New York District. You are all welcome. You are all welcome to Kiss Down with Jesus. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, hear what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done yes precious ones if you sit down and you count your blessings and name them one by one it will surprise you how far the lord has brought you it will surprise you how many times you have fallen sick and the lord has healed you it will surprise you how often you went to school and you didn't understand that math and god helped you to understand the lord has been so good unto us and we precious ones we need to have an attitude of gratitude by saying thank you to jesus but before we hit on our scripture for today we are going to learn our memory verse we are going to go ahead and learn our memory verse for today we are going ahead and just go straight and learn our memory verse for today and our memory verse for today will be taken from um psalm 1 verse 9 psalm 1 verse 9 i give thanks to the lord with my whole heart it didn't say with half heart it didn't say with quarter heart he says that I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will, I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. Amen. 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 So I want all of you to practice at home, okay? It is always good. My Auntie Nina always say, it is always good to learn when reverse and to keep it in your pocket and use it when it's time for you to use it. When appropriate, use the memory verse. The memory verse, my daughter was one time asking me, is memory verse separate from the Bible? No, it is all inside the Bible. So it is, it is, I always say that it is a verse or it's a sentence you learn to equip yourself. Most of the time you'll be sitting down if you don't want to take the Bible, some of these memory verses will come in your head and then what? You relate to them. 
okay? So God richly bless all of you. Try and practice them at home. We are going to go ahead and then we are going to look at our lesson for today. So our lesson for today will be, the topic is being thankful, being thankful, being thankful to Christ, being thankful to Christ, being thankful to Christ, being thankful to Christ. That is our topic for today and for the whole week. And our scripture reading, we'll take our scripture reading from Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. But as we go on, we are going to be reading our scripture. And as we read the scriptures, we will use it and relate it to what we'll be discussing for this afternoon. Now, before we hit our lesson, Esther, what are you thankful for? I'm going to go around and ask everybody what you're thankful for. What are you thankful for, Esther? I'm thankful for my friends. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for God. And I'm thankful for the, all the people that love me. Esther is thankful for all the people, all the, sorry, all the people that loves her. She is thankful to God for all the people that loves her. Yes, Joel, what are you thankful for? Um, I'm thankful for I'm thankful for the fact that I have the right to learn about God and worship Him, and I'm thankful for going to church. Joel is thanking God. He is thankful to God for for he having the opportunity to serve God and being able to go to church. There's no, there's no, nothing, no freedom has been taken from him. He can go to church anytime and he can worship God anytime. God bless you, Joel. Uh, Darren, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful that I don't need a tube of oxygen to breathe. He is thankful breathe. that he doesn't need oxygen tank to breathe. That is what he's thankful for. God richly bless you. Declan, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful, I'm thankful for the breath of life and for the house that I live in right now. He is thankful for the house he lives in, shelter. God has provided him with shelter, so he's thankful for that. And for the air he breathes, he doesn't pay no bills on the air he breathes. God richly bless you, Declan. Um, Benedict, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my life and I'm also thankful for my parents. He is thankful for his parent and for his life. Benedict, God richly bless you. Isha, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my little sister, my mom, and my dad. He, she is thankful to um, she is thankful to God for her family, mom, dad, and her little sister. Isha, God richly bless you. James, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my life and for my family. James is thankful to God for his life and for the life of his family. God bless all of you. God richly bless all of you. So precious ones, we have read from Psalm 9 verse 1, where it talks about, that's our memory verse, that we should give thanks to the Lord with our whole hearts. And we should recount of all the wonderful deeds that he has done for us. When someone does something nice for you, what do you do? You say thank you, right? You always say thank you. Sometimes we even want to go to the extent of giving them what? A thank you card. A card. You feel like doing something extra. Apart from saying thank you, you feel like doing something extra. You can, uh, some kids even get a construction paper, paper and write or color or do something nice and do what? And turn it into the person. And then sometimes people also go, they ask their mom and dad, and then those children go to the store and buy a thank you card and put a note in it and share it with the person that did something good for them, right? And another way uh, you can also show thanks when someone does something um, really nice for you is by doing something nice for them in return, right? Like if someone invites you to spend the night or if you have a really good time or you return 
um, their kindness, sometimes you also invite them to come for sleepover in their house. Or sometimes when somebody gives you a birthday gift, you send them a thank you note to say, thank you for coming to share my special day um, with me, right? There are so many ways that we express or return when somebody do something good for us. There's ways that we return and uh, we return um, our thankfulness or saying that, oh, somebody did something, you say, thank you. And then the person also, you also do something in return by also doing something for the person to also say thank you. Now, precious ones, when you think about the holiday, which is Thanksgiving, what comes to your mind? The holiday that is coming up or the Thanksgiving, the month of November, Thanksgiving month that we are in. When you hear Thanksgiving, what actually comes into your mind when you hear thanksgiving what actually comes into your mind yes benedict and then we go to um esther thanksgiving cookies thanksgiving cookies okay yes esther uh i think about being thankful for all the things that i have you think about all the things that god has done for you you feel like what you need to be thankful to God. Fantastic answers. God bless you. Yes, Joel. Um, when I think of Thanksgiving, I think of spending time with family and relatives. When Joel thinks of Thanksgiving, he also thinks of what? Spending time with family. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, Declan. Um, I think about giving thanks. To he thinks about giving thanks. James, was your hands up? Okay, you can go, James. Oh. I would just say that on Thanksgiving, like I think about like being thankful and grateful for all that you have and that God has given you. So James, go back in memory lane and begin to reflect on all the good things that the Lord has done for him to say, Father, I thank you. Yes, Isra. Um, when I when I hear, hear the word um Thanksgiving, it makes me. And um, what pops into my brain makes me to give thanks and also be giving. You always, when it's Thanksgiving um, season, you always think of being thankful to the Lord. You share a fantastic contribution. God richly blessed. Today's lesson will teach us what the Bible say about thankfulness. Thankfulness. Our lesson will teach us about thankfulness. We will let James read for us um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7 from the New International Version. And I read, spiritual fullness in Christ. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us what we should be most thankful for. True thankfulness comes from knowing Jesus Christ. Right? When we are faithful to God and chooses to obey his commandment, then we will experience through a true thankfulness, knowing him, obeying him, and expressing what? Our thankfulness to the living God, right? When you read Psalm 131 verse 1, it also talks about why we should be thankful to God. Now, can someone read for us Psalm 136 verse 1? 136 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. We should give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endure it forever. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, because, now, precious one, how do you know this promise is true? Because what? He sent us what? Wow, do we know this promise that we said that what? Give thanks to the Lord for his good and his mercies endure forever. Right? Right, precious ones. Now, how do we know that this promise is true? 
I nearly answered the questions myself. <laughs> yes. You can go on. Um, so I can tell by a lot of um, Bible scriptures, there's a lot of Bible scriptures about thankfulness. And as you can see, the ones that we're reading are some of the examples that we can, um, that we can learn about God and being thankful. Yes. So it means that there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible that we can relate to, right? That talks about being thankful unto the Lord, right? Being thankful unto the Lord. Sometimes being thankful doesn't have to, you don't have to have, um, you see, there are certain stories that we always say that these stories are meant for, maybe we, the children, don't really experience that. It's for grown-ups. But being thankful, hello, precious ones, there's a lot that goes on around us, right? That we can be thankful for. Birthdays, right? They, the Lord protected you for a whole year from January to another January and you celebrated your birthday. You ate all the sweets. You ate your cake. You ate the, your best food. Mommy and daddy took you to the restaurant. Whatever you listed was given to you. Do you think you need to be thankful to only mommy and daddy for giving you the cake and all that? We need to be thankful to God. God who was so us through that whole year, right? There's so many things that surround us that we need to be thankful for. But as human as we are, sometimes we forget, right? And it is okay sometimes if we forget. But now we have learned that every day we need to be thankful to God. It doesn't have to be in the month of November. It doesn't have to be the Thanksgiving day. But every second in a day or in a week, or in a month, in a year, we need to have an attitude of gratitude, saying thank you, saying thank you at all times, because it is very, very important. Yes, Declan, your hand was up. Um, what was the question? <laughs> how do you, how do you express how we read a scripture from um, Psalm 136, verse 1, and we say that, Give thanks to the Lord for his good and his mercies endure it forever. And we said, how, how, how do we, I forgot our question too. Um, how, yes, Daryl, you can help me here. Okay, you said, how do we know that this promise is true? How do we know that this promise is true? Thank you. Yes, that could. And it's okay if you've forgotten, we can move on. We know that this promise is true because he sent his one and only son to die for us, as it says in Romans 5, 8, for, that, for God demonstrates his love for us in this. Whilst we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. As we are still sinners, God, Christ still died for us. Now I have a question. Can someone share with us a time in their lives when Jesus took care of them? Can someone share with us a time in their lives that Jesus took care of them? I know this question may sound like, mm, this question just doesn't, but there's a reason for asking this question. So it looks like everybody's hands is up except Benedict. Okay, we're gonna go around and everybody is gonna share with us, right? A time that you believe Jesus took care of you. Let's start with James. And then I come to Benedict. Yes, James. So there's this one time that I, like we were going outside. Me and my mom's gonna get a haircut and she left her wallet at home. And um, she said she didn't have any money to pay the guy. And then she kept looking through the bag and she kept looking through the bag. And then I told mom, I was like, mom, look again. Then when she looked again, even though her wallet was at home, and she had no money in the bag. She somehow found like just enough money to pay for the haircut and give the guy a tip. So and we've always been saying like that's that has to be a miracle. Amen. God bless you for sharing with us. Somehow, some way, some something happened, right? The money that they were looking for that they couldn't find, God provided it. I would say God provided that money to the extent that they had enough to give tip. The Lord is good. Our God is faithful. He always take care of us. 
Yes, let's go to Benedict. In the beginning of the school year, when I didn't have enough school supplies, and my mom was, it was like a Monday, my mom was leaving. My dad came in just in time to buy me some new school supplies, so that was beneficial. God came in just in time. The dad came in just in time, right? He was going to school. Mommy has to go somewhere. Mommy couldn't get time to go get the supplies. Daddy came in just in time to help get the school supplies. Do you think daddy just happened to show up at that time? It is the Holy Spirit that brought daddy on time because why? God knew Benedict needed those school supplies for school. God was there. And did you say thank you, Benedict, to God? Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God took care of him. Now, yes, let's go to um, the Morgan family. We start with Esther and go to Joel. Then we come to the euphoria and then Nisha. So there was a time when I went camping with my church friends. And like, it was kind of like, like about four or five districts there. And like, we stayed for about two to three days. And um, I got a lot of mosquito bites which like was really itchy. And sometimes it like, like um, it was like really painful, but mm -hmm. what's worse than mosquito bites? There's like a lot of things that's worse than mosquito bites. So I think that we should be thankful because his love endures forever. And we should thank God for what we can still do, whether it is waking up in the morning or going to school or for adults work or finding some moments of enjoyment in our life. Amen. Esther, thank you. God bless you for sharing with us. God took care of Esther when she went for camp. And those bugs really had a feast on her. But guess what? God took care of her. God protected her. Esther had a beautiful home. She has a beautiful home. She could have just stayed and, right, and just rest in her house. But guess what she did? She decided to go to the church camp. And the mosquitoes are like, I'm going to frustrate you. But guess Guess what? God took care of her. She didn't get sick. Mosquito, but it was itchy and it was painful. But God took care of it. God bless you for sharing with us. Yes, uh, Joel. So um, there was a time where the same camp that I went with Esther and mosquito bites also bit me like 12 times. And, and during the second day, I was really, really sick and I didn't feel well. And I wasn't able to play soccer with my friends. And I felt like really bad. But then on the third day, I felt a lot better and energetic. And I, and I was very grateful that God took care of me while I was sick. Thank you, Joel, for sharing with us. Now, you see, we were saying that Esther, God took care of her when the mosquitoes had a feast on her, right? But she didn't get sick. She, 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 she went. She still went and enjoyed the camp. Now... The, the, they, the same mosquitoes, huh? these mosquitoes, they are very troubled people. They had a feast on Joel and Joel got sick. But you see, the Bible says that when we get sick, he will heal us. He healed Joel. So Joel went to this three day comes, right? Three day come, three days come. And guess what? He didn't get sick through all the three days. He got better to enjoy the come before coming home. God took care of them. And he what? He was able to play soccer. God bless you for sharing with us. Beloved, precious ones at home, God will always take care of us. And when he, when he takes care of us, we need to be thankful. We need to have an attitude of gratitude. Yes, the whole um, Fori family. I'm getting carried away again. <laughs> Okay, for me, a time that I remember uh, that God took care of me was when one time we were going to church on Pittsburgh and we were a little bit late, so as you can tell, my dad was in a hurry. And, we, and it had also snowed a lot that day. And I remember one specific place we reached there, and because it had snowed so much, it had become extremely steep. Mm. Many people had already gotten an accident over there. We, we almost got an accident there if, if my dad wasn't careful and if God hadn't intervened, we all could have had an accident. After it, well, but we actually went safe and sound. No one, no one got hit, like zero. God took care of you. Daron is sharing with us. You know, pastors, they are driving here, they are driving there, places that we, the members, will be home just chillaxing. 
the pastors and their families will be on the road going somewhere. But even through all those drivings and visitations and they have to do this and they have to do that, God still took care of his family. That even during that incident that she, he shared with us, God took care of them that nothing bad happened to them. God bless you, Darren, for sharing with us. Yes, Declan. Every day that you're going to church or every, mostly every day that you're on the car, we run up and down over speed limits, but still the Lord takes care of us. Oh, yes. Sometimes you'll be running late and you have to get to church and you kind of push the, you have to kind of speed up a little bit, right? But through it all, through it all, the God took you to church safely with your family. God has taken care of you. God bless you for sharing with us. And did you say thank you to God? Yes, you did. Yes, Insha, can you share with us? The time that God blessed me is when when on, on, is in Easter on the, our way to church, a, a car bumped our um our car and made uh, my my mom's car bump into a different car, but luckily they were still safe. And um, we, we got hurt a little bit, but we were safe. So, Michelle, God richly bless you for sharing it with us. The Lord took care of them. The Lord delivered them from accident. Even though they got hurt a little bit, the Lord made sure that they were back on their feet and nothing really bad happened. They were back on their feet and they are going about their business. God took care of them. And Isha, did you say thank you to Jesus? Yes, you did. Yes, God with children. Why should also, pretty much we should also be thankful because God gives us victory through Jesus, right? We have to be thankful because God gives us victory through Jesus. All that we have shared here proves that word. God gives us victory through Jesus. We were able to come out of whatever we found ourselves. We came out, we realized that God took care of us. He always does. He always steps in and glory be unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Precious ones, God does more than just providing salvation for us. He takes care of us. He gives us our daily victory over the life's trials, over life's life, life challenges and situations that are not pleasant, like the enemy coming to us with, with sicknesses and diseases and disappointment and, and things to frustrate us, we that are in the Lord. But through it all, God still gives us victory. God still gives us victory. And that is why we need to be thankful to him. We have confidence that he will always be with us and that he should what? We, and because he will always be with us and we know that for sure, we that are in Christ Jesus needs to be thankful to God at all times, at all times. Precious ones, um, can someone read for us um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. And I read from the NIV. But give thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our G Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What Benedict read confirms what I just said that we should also be thankful because God gives us victory through Jesus. And because of that, we need to have confidence that he will always be with us. He will always be with us. We need to have confidence that you always be with us. God gives us what? Victory through Jesus. God bless you, Benedict. I want someone to also open for us Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 to 28. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 11, 24 to 28. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 to 28 from the NIV Bible. And I read, 
45 times I received from the Jews, 40 lashes minus one. Verse 25. Mm. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. That was 26. I have been constantly on the move. I have mm. been in danger from rivers, in, mm. in, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in mm. danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. Mm. Verse 27, I have labored and toiled, and I've often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst, and I've often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. That verse 28, besides everything else, I, besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for the, all the churches. Amen. 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 Before we call here, it was Paul that was speaking to us. Now, someone else should read First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, and then we will discuss these topics, the scriptures. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18. Let me just get the thing up and ready. Okay. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Beloved. We need to admit that sometimes it can be hard to, to be thankful in the midst of, 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 of our difficulties, right? Sometimes it's hard for us to say, thank you to Jesus, or God, I thank you for what I'm going through. I'm not doing good in math. I'm not, I'm not doing well in my reading class. Um, I've asked mommy to buy me this. Mommy is not buying, but God, I'm still saying thank you. How many kids will say that? Let's be practical, for real, no, right? So sometimes it is hard to be thankful, even me. Sometimes it is very hard to be thankful to God in the midst of our difficulties, right? You see, Paul faced many trials and from what we just read from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 to 24 to the 28, he faced so many trials, but he still remained thankful even when life was hard. Paul remained thankful because he chose to be obedient to God. He was faithful no matter what happened. Precious one, can someone share their own example with us of when it could be hard to be thankful? Can any of you share with us their own example? It can be, it can be what you've gone through or what you have had, right? About a time that it was, it was pretty much things were hard, right? It was very hard for you to say, thank you, God. Can any of us here share with us? Yes, you can go. Let's start with Benedict, and then we come to Esther. I'm just going to give some common examples that mostly every human really goes through and things that nobody really says. Like, man, this Wi-Fi is amazing. Or this house is small. I just love it. Or I have so much money. Or I need more homework. There's always complaints in these type of days not really not much gratitude in this world so i really want to elaborate on the stuff that or just said that um we really need to be more grateful and doubt for what we really have now versus what we don't have amen amen benedict god richly bless you we need to be grateful for what we have now than what we do not what we do not have um this this were my esther before i come to you um, one, one day, my, one of my, my, my youngest, who is five years old, woke up from bed, walked straight to my room, and she was like, 
oh, um, since I was born in this house, can we go buy a house, another big house where I can have the swimming pool? And, and I, I was just looking at her when she was down, I was like, which side of the bed did you, which side of the bed did you get out from, right? She just woke up and she started talking about getting another house. But this time, this time she wanted a house with a pool, with this, with a that, because the house she lives in, she was, she has, she's born in that house. So now she needs a new house. Can you imagine? Right? So how about those that are living in one, one, one single room with their family and their siblings all in one room? That is equivalent to your room. You, you, you spend time in just that room, right? There are kids somewhere that don't even have their own rooms, right? So sometimes, just as Benedict said, we need to be grateful for what we have, right? You have a lot of toys that you don't even have a place to put them. And you're asking for more toys. Why don't you want to donate some of the ones that you have that you don't even share? You don't use, sorry, right? Let us share. Let us be grateful for what we have. We shouldn't always be asking for more. Yes, Esther, let me come to you. Um, so sometimes there can be times when, for example, like let's say there's two more cookies in the tin and Joel mm -hmm. gets a big, like sometimes um, mostly Joel gets a big whole cookie and then I have to share half with my sister. But then I realize at least I get a cookie um, from my mom. Like I could only give Joel, she could only give Joel and my sister cookies and none for me. So in conclusion, for some of us, gratitude just doesn't come easy. If we're preoccupied with negative emotions, <clears throat> thoughts and emotions, we can, um, by definition, not experience gratitude at the same time. Like, it's impossible to feel positive and negative emotions. Like, you can't balance it. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can't, not, you can't balance um, positive and negative emotions at the same time. Amen. Amen! Great contribution, Esther. Great contribution. Fantastic one. Precious ones. It doesn't come that easy, right? Being thankful. Sometimes it's hard, right? Sometimes it's hard. I have been there and I know what I'm talking about. My older son, I don't know whether I've shared it with you before. My oldest is 16 years old and my next child is six years old and the next one is five years old, right? Somebody asks, Auntie, why did you wait that long to have? Yeah. Sometimes you may wish you want to have something, but when it, it had not come yet, do you still have to be mad at God? Do you have to say that, you know what? I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that. You still have to be thankful. Even when negative emotions and positive emotions, they are all kind of playing their own ways. We that are in the Lord, we still have to stay positive in hard times, right? And still give thanks to the Lord. For he is good and his mercies endure it forever. Even though it tarries, he will come through for us. Precious ones. Even though whatever you want is not coming. And you've been asking over and over and it's not coming. Hang in there. God will provide. He will surely come through for you. If it is wisdom to be smart in school, ask God. It will come through for you. God bless you, Esther. Thank you for sharing with us. Yes, Joel. Um. One of one of the leading like examples that we can take like being thankful for or being like um like gratitude towards for something is Job when when he was suffering when, like when Satan was testing him and he was suffering a lot mm -hmm. he didn't complain not once during the entire time and since he did not complain not once during the suffering God gave him ten times the amount of things or mm. two times. And, and like that, that's a good example for us because when we, we are so grateful for all God has done through our suffering, then maybe we could get a good like price or like God will be glad because he knows that you're faithful to him, even though you're suffering. Even though you are suffering and you are still faithful and thankful to him, God will come in for you. And that is why Joe is sharing, um, Joe is sharing with that 
with the story of Job. The devil really tortured Job, right? And the Bible says that it is him that allowed the devil to do that, right? Who bear witness to that, right? Is that what the scripture says? That God allowed the enemy to go for Job because it's like Job, Jesus was bra God was bragging about what? Job, right? Oh, no, not, not my son. No, no, my son Job. Oh, no, 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 you can't touch him. You touch him, I'm telling you, he'll still go for me. Jesus was bragging about what? Job. God was bragging about Job. And guess what happened? Did Job disappoint God? He didn't. He still stood firm. And then after going through all those trials, even in, in his difficult times, right? He was still faithful and was thankful to God, right? All his friends abounded him, his children, right? His wife, but still, he still stood for God. And when God would bless him again, he, would, he got it in what? In double, what? Fold, in double portions, right? It is hard sometimes. It is hard sometimes to, to be grateful to God or to be thankful to God and be faithful in difficult times. But we need to do it. We need to ask for grace from God to be able to pull through, okay? Yes, we go to Daryl. James, was your hands up? Did I, did I? Oh, okay. I'm coming to you though next. Okay. Be quiet so for me, uh, James. <laughs> yes, Darren. Okay, while Joel was saying that, while Joel was speaking about um, Job, this is what I found in the Bible. I was like looking for the book of Job, and this is what I found. If you can see what well, you can see that it's two rings. Uh huh. Well, at the end of the story, you heard from the Bible that um, his friends they comforted him and they said they comforted and consoled him all of, over all the trouble the Lord had brought him brought on him, and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. That means mm. that if you had you are rich. That means that you must have a lot of friends. That means mm -hmm. that each and every one of them gave you a silver and a gold ring, then he must have had a lot of those lying around. Mm -hmm. At the end of this one, when God gives you trouble, remember that there are better days coming up. There are better yeah. days coming up. I love that statement. When you are going through any difficulties, right? If you are, if you are, if you are, I don't know the word to use. If, 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 if things are not going on right for you, right? It can be in school, right? Where there are some kids that was auntie, I've been learning, I've been studying, but I go and when it's time for my class, I black out. It's like, it doesn't feel like I, I'm, I even study, right? You need to go to Christ. You need to go to God and ask, God, I don't know what to do. Can you, can you come in and help me? I'm telling you, Jesus loved little children. There's nothing that is too hard for our God, right? And just as Darren just said, at the end of it all, God will always come through for us. He always does. I'm yet to see anyone that has gone through trials and temptations and bad times and God didn't come through for them. God always come through. He always come through. He will come through for us. He will come through for your family. He will come through whatever you are going through. Yes, James. So I also wanted to say, you talk, well, yeah, on the topic of trials and tribulations, I wanted to say, like, you, I, was, I was agreeing with what you said on how you said, like, God comes through for you. Because, for example, look at Apostle Paul, right? Mm -hmm. He was, like, the, the apostle who, like, always was in jail. Like, half the epistles he wrote, like, in Sunday school, we're learning today, like, Colossians was written from jail to the people of Colossae. So, if you look at Paul, he's always in jail for doing the gospel, and yet, even though he's always in jail, we see the story of when the angels came and they opened, and the angels came and opened the, the gates of the prison, and Paul's able to be free. Now, one thing I admire about Paul is his faithfulness to God, because if I was Paul, and I just went in jail, and the angels came and rescued me. I'd be like, "Uh huh, you guys see? You thought you were gonna, you guys thought were gonna trap me, but here I am." But no, Paul used that 
he used that avenue to go and minister to the um, jailer and save him and his entire family. So he could have used that time to start bragging, but he was being faithful to God. And since we're still on the topic of Job, I also wanted to say something about too, because look at Job, right? Even if Job decided to stay fast to God, his own wife was telling him to curse God and die. His mm -hmm. friends were even telling him to do that. Meaning Job's family, his, his children died, all his crops, all his um, farms, everything is gone. His he friends are everything. pressuring everything. All his friends are pressuring him. Like the devil himself went to God to grant permission to harm Job. Yet through everything he's gone through, he still stayed to, um, steadfast to God. So I really think that as Christians, we can learn a lot from Paul and Job about being steadfast and like faithful to God. And like you said, even though things like hard times may be coming, God will always pull through for us. Amen. God will always pull through for us. God bless you, James. Great contribution. Yes, Benedict. I just want to say one thing about um, blessing and all that stuff. When God opens a door and gives you a blessing, like I want to piggyback of what off James said, when the angels came to save him and how he used that opportunity, instead of bragging and giving bragging rights, he used it for form, acts of service to weigh his, show his way thank, of thankfulness to God. Because one of the best ways to show thankfulness to God is actually by helping other people that are really less fortunate than you. Amen. 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 I always, 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 and always tell my children that if you think we are not doing enough for you, when you are driving, see the, the, the kids that are in shelter, right? Some kids have to go to foster homes, right? Some kids um, can't even get three square meals, right? Because one way or the other, they just can't have it, right? But you get breakfast, lunch, dinner. In between them, you get snacks. Some eat and eat and eat till their parent tell them, no, stop eating, right? And we are fortunate. We need to be thankful to God for that, right? That you wake up and there's food on your table, right? Now, I'm sure those up there, like in New York, in those cold places, it's already winter right now, right? Well, in Charlotte, it's still not cold in North Carolina. We're still enjoying some sun here. So it's not, it's not really, really like too cold, right? So we don't have the jacket and all those things on now yet. But let me tell you, precious ones, mommy and daddy got to figure it out, right? Okay, it's getting to the winter. We need to change their clothes. It's summer, we need to change their clothes. Not every child gets the opportunity to be changing clothes every season, right? And there are times that we have even kids that are less fortunate in the church with us, that you see them, that you know things are not right with them. You need to go closer to them. Whatever they need, you need to share with them, right? Sometimes it may be a jacket. Your jacket now, mommy is changing your clothes, right? You've grown out of them. You can talk to that friend. Hey, I have this jacket. It is a little bit small and I have a new one. Do you mind? You can talk to mommy if you can have it and share, right? It's not that there is COVID. So everybody's like, eh, a little bit, right? But this is something that we can do, right? This is something that we can do as precious ones. We need to share with the least fortunate people. Why? Because what? And you see, these are things that made me sing that song. That I, Count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done in your life. And currently what the Lord is doing for you. Right? Yes. I think Benedict's hand was up and then we go to Daryl. I want to say one thing that actually led me to my next contribution is try not to be feel proud or entitled about your blessings. It's human mm. nature to be like, um, okay, hooray, feel like our accomplishments belong to us. However, if you mm. want to live your life, you have to be giving constant things to God. Like you said, some people just don't have that. In Luke 14, 11, it says, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And for those mm. who humble 
will be exalted. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Darren. What Benedict said is true, but then there are still other believers, in fact, actually prophets, who they are always complaining, someone like Jonah. Because when you read the story of Jonah, you realize that after being fish food and then being, uh, how do I say this now? And then coming out of the fish, mm -hmm. then after being fish food and then coming out of the fish, God said, go to Nineveh. You, at first, you went to your to me, I brought you back. But now go to Nineveh. He's, he went. Yes, he preached that. He said everything. He did awesome. Sure, he must have been a very famous guy for doing all of that. Yet in the end, he still, still, mm. he still insisted that God destroyed them. Even mm. though he was a prophet, he should have known that God isn't just one of those gods that because you've done this, they will count it and then in the end they will destroy. He should have known that. Yes, he was a prophet. Yet he still didn't do that. He, real, he still asked that God would destroy Nineveh. And even after God had a little bit of mercy and gave him a shade, he's, and then the shade died because he still was thinking negatively. He was like, ah, my only shade. He sang a whole song and everything about it. So he was just one of those prophets who never actually really understood God. God had given him a mission, yet he went the exact opposite. God bless you for sharing with us. Yes, you sure. Do you have anything to share with us before we bring... The lesson to an end. Insure. Insure, are you there? You want to share with us? No? I can't hear you. Yes. You want to share or no? Yes. But what, what, um, do I share what I learned? Yeah, you can share what you learned with us. Um, I learned that um, you, even if you have like a toy and your friend has a toy, you, you can work together and find out if you guys can make like trade toys. If you want a toy, and she, if you want her toy and she can, if she wants your toy. God bless you, Cheryl, for sharing with us. Today, our topic has been thankful to Christ. And our memory verse was taken from Psalm 1 and Psalm 9, verse 1. And it reads that we will give thanks to the Lord with all our heart, and we will recount all of his wonderful deeds. And we also talked about how we need to be thankful and, 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 and stay faithful, even in good times and in bad times. And when somebody does something for us, we need to show appreciation, having an attitude of gratitude. We looked about few scriptures in the Bible, and one of them in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, where it talked about how we should be thankful because God gives us victory through Jesus Christ. So no matter what we're going through, or no matter what comes our way, Jesus will give us victory. And we also looked at a, a lot of scriptures, including 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 24 to 28. And we also looked at the first Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. And here we realize we also learned that Paul, Paul went through many trials. And one of the kids even suggested was sharing with us how most of his, his, his I think it was James, most of his letters and Colossians was even written whilst he was in jail, right? So he went through a lot, but that, that, that did not stop him from doing God's work. He was still thankful even in the midst of his difficulties. And that is what we have learned as precious ones today that even in difficult times, we should be thankful to God. In good times too, we need to be thankful to God because we sometimes, little ones, we forget to even say thank you when somebody does something for us. Sometimes we forget to even say thank you. Gratitude is an attitude that comes out of a habit of giving thanks. Let me repeat that. Gratitude is an attitude that comes out of a habit of giving thanks. All through Psalms, no matter what David was facing, and when you read Psalms, right, with all that David was facing, 
right? He, we read that his outpouring of gratitude to God was just phenomenal. It's just, it's, it's mind blowing. He was always out there just outpouring his thanks and his heart to God. As he encountered good times and both bad times, right? So the outpouring of his gratitude wasn't only in good times, but in bad times too, David expressed his gratitude to God. We want our thanksgiving to come out of a genuine heart. We should remember and not forget. Our thanksgiving should come out of a genuine heart. If somebody does something and you really appreciate it, oh, you say, oh, mom, thank you, mom, thank you, mom, and then you give them a hug, right? The more we would meditate on God's goodness and practice our thanks, no matter what our circumstances will be, the more it will naturally flow out of our heart that what God loves us. And therefore, even though it carries, he will come through for us. No matter how it gets, I know my Lord will come in and help out. No matter how bad it is or good, I know God will come in for us. Benedict, I will let you sum this up. Esther, was your hands up too? Okay, so we'll go to Benedict, we'll go to Esther, we we'll go to <laughs> Daron, Declan, James, and then we'll bring the last, because I just did my sermon. But we're just going to listen to all of you and then we end. So let's start with Benedict. I just want to say one thing. Well, not one thing, but I was going to say what I've learned this time. I've learned that thankfulness is very contagious. When you mm. see someone going up for testimony, other people start running up and getting their testimonies. Thankfulness is kind of like a leader. And as Christians, you really want to be the leader because Jesus was always leading the group whenever the disciples came. The disciples would follow him. And as Jesus left, he told us to be his replica or like follow him and be more like him. So we should be thankful like him and be the leaders. Don't be the last one at church to be like, so I, Jesus gave me this, right? And I said, go sit down, hey, 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 and something like that. <laughs> you really have to be thankful or always be going up first. Got to be the leader, mm. not the followers. Amen. Amen. God bless you for sharing with us. Yes, Esther. So I wanted to add to what you said, um, like when you um, were um, kind of ending it, I wanted to say that basically what we've learned so far is that gratitude means thanks and appreciation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And appreciation, Esther, you've summed it well for me. God bless you. Thanks and appreciation. Having an attitude of thanks and appreciation. God bless you. Yes. Joel, you want to say something before I skip? Okay, you can go then. Um, what I learned is that when you're thankful, it, sh it means a lot to a person. When you're thankful for what they've done, like let's say your mom has cooked you jollof, and mm. then you're like, thanks, mom, I really appreciate it. God bless you. It means a lot to them in their heart because they know that they feel, they, they know that they're appreciated and that their work is, their work is like doing a lot for that one person. Mm, mm, God bless you. That is a good practical example, Joel. God richly bless you too. Now let's go to, was it James? You will go to James, come to Darren and Declan. One thing I wanted to say about gratitude and faithfulness is that you have to, like, you have to choose to be faithful because like Paul and Job, right? After everything they went to, if, if I was done, I would have just got up one day, like, after getting three lashes, I would have got up and be like, you know what, I'm done. Like, I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna go through this anymore. Like, I'm trying, I'm spreading the gospel, I'm doing the good thing, but, like, this much punishment, I don't think I'm cut out for this, you know? But, Joe, he lost everything, and Paul, he got punished and prosecuted so many times, yet they still stayed faithful to God throughout all their, like, troubles and trials. So I was just saying that you have to really choose to be faithful. You can't just get up and, and your mom goes to school and learns how to be faithful and, and then downloads it to you somehow. You have to, like, you have to do 
it's like you know how you say always say grat attitude of gratitude well there's also an attitude of faithfulness amen an attitude of faithfulness james god richly bless you for sharing with us god bless you too um we'll go to declan declan then daryl i learned that just like david praised god regardless of what he was facing or struggling with we should always thank the lord like in any circumstances god bless you god bless you. yes darren what i learned is is well it is psalm 136 verse 1. i'd already read it before and in fact i told my mom and everything but for some reason i forgot about it i forgot mm -hmm. where i could even find it so thank you antonina okay what i learned is that give thanks to the lord for he is good and his love endures forever when you read it for me it, it means a lot to me because not only does it tell you to just give thanks to the lord it actually gives you a reason to give thanks to the lord because mm. when you read someone that 136 the verse one he when you read the whole you know, not actually the verse one the entire chapter you realize that all he keeps on saying is his love and yours forever and for and for david or whoever wrote it to say his love and yours forever an entire chapter entire chapter every second sentence it says give thanks to the lord his love endures forever read the next 26 verses under all of the the reasons it always says his love endures forever that means that in any circumstance in anything at all god's love is always enduring forever god bless you god bless us all precious ones great discussion i am so happy that all the precious ones here know the reason why we need to be thankful at all times to our almighty God. We must always remember, we, we always have to remember to learn to express our thanks to the Father through consistency, right? It should be, it should be a behavior, a habitual attitude that we are going to, we are going to express our tongue our thankfulness and faithfulness to the Lord, precious ones. We want our thanks given to come out of a genuine heart, right? We just don't have to say it because you just have to say it, but it has to come from a genuine heart. May the Lord bless us all. May the Lord bless his word. And my prayer for all of us is that, including myself, that we will be in the mood of what? Of, 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 rendering or, or, or saying thank you to, to the Lord at all times, in good times and in bad times. And as we could relate to Job, and as we could relate to Paul, they all went through challenges. They all went difficult times. But the Bible has made us know this afternoon, even when they were going through all those things, still they were thankful and faithful to God. May it be our portion this afternoon. May the Lord bless us as we go. We celebrate the month of ten, uh, November as we go through and just swim in the pool of Thanksgiving. But we that are in the Lord, every day is a mood of Thanksgiving. Everything that surrounds us testify of God's goodness. Father, we are so thankful unto you. Until then, when we see you next week, stay safe and we love you and God love you 